I was over at mom and dad's house the other day and they had this old non-working computer. I'm the type of person who really can't back down from a challenge so I volunteered to take it home and see if I could make it function properly again. It turns out that its major malfunction was a bad power supply unit. This is kind of a fancy transformer switch circuit breaker mechanism that supplies power to all of the major components of the computer and the unit that was installed wasn't working as it should. It turns out that I had a spare power supply unit in my workshop that I was using as just kind of a 12 volt general power source. If you're interested in converting a computer power supply to a workshop power source, it may behoove you to look at this video right here. So I took that power supply unit and installed it in the case here, and I was feeling really good about my progress until I realized that the graphics board on this computer, which is right here, requires something called a PCIe power plug. It's a six pin connector that this old Dell power supply does not feature. The offending power supply actually had two of the PCIe plugs. They look like this and my plan is to cut off one of the plugs from this power supply, which I've already done, and tie it into this power supply so I can properly power my graphics card. There are mass-produced adapter cables that convert two of these Molex connectors to one PCIe connector, but because this computer is probably not even worth the scrap metal that it consists of, I really find it difficult to spend any money on it. So I'm going to try to make a functional PCIe power plug on my own. The first thing I need to do in order to fabricate a working PCIe plug is figure out what wires do what. It turns out that the yellow wires are all 12 volt and these black wires are all negative ground. On the power supply all of these Molex connectors have a yellow wire which is 12 volts, a couple of black ground wires and a red wire which is 5 volts. My first thought was to just take one of these spare connectors and cut off the red wire and wire this yellow positive 12 volt wire to all three of the wires on this PCIe cable. But as I understand it, the power rating for this connector I think is around 75 watts and this connector's power rating I think is in the neighborhood of 50 or 60 watts so technically if I were to just tie this connector to this connector it may be overloaded so that's why we actually need to utilize two separate power connectors to properly power my PCIe plug. I need to figure out which connectors I'm going to sacrifice in order to bring to life my PCIe plug. It's important that the two connectors I use have their own wires that lead back to the power supply unit. I can't just use what's called a daisy chain connection which would be this wire and this wire because they both just go back 
to the same set of wires that goes to the power supply. I would need to use two separate leads to the power supply. So after figuring out which plugs I need for my installed peripherals, it looks like I can use these wires, which look like they've already been cut, and this plug right here. So for this plug, I just need to strip these two wires, the positive 12 volt and the negative. And for this plug over here, I think I will switch these two. I'll plug this one into my CD-ROM drive and I will use this one for my PCIe plug. I don't really want to cut any of these wires because I would just have to wire them back together in order to make this plug work again. So I will just cut the yellow and black and I need to strip these and now it's just a matter of connecting everything. I've also stripped all of the wires on my PCIe plug. The way I'm going to put this all together is I'm going to tie together two of these yellows and two of these blacks and that's going to go to this yellow and this black and this yellow and this black are going to go over here to this connector. I can connect these in a few different ways. I could just twist them together and tape them or I could use wire nuts or I could use butt connectors but I'm going to solder them. My soldering iron should be warmed up now. I have it weighted down here on the countertop with some kind of low-grade Chinese buffet food. And the reason I have it weighted down is because I'm going to just apply a little bit of solder to each of these wires. The reason I'm doing this is because I found it makes them easier to put together later. If they all have a little bit of solder on them, I can put them together with just the soldering iron. Just heat up the solder that's already on the wires and they will stick together. I'm not really a professional electronics guy so this might not be the industry standard but it should work for my vintage computer application. I believe this is called tinning. I thought about it after I turned off the camera. This is called tinning. I'm tinning these wires. So now I have plenty of solder on all the wires and I just need to put everything together. I will start with this plug. I think I decided that this was the plug I was going to run two of each wire to. So I'll gather up all my yellow wires and hopefully we can get them to stick together.
took some effort and it's not beautiful, but it should work. Now I will do the same thing with the black wires. So now I have a yellow wire and a black wire from this power connector going to two yellow wires and two black wires on this PCIe plug and the next step is to just connect the black and yellow wires of this other power connector to the PCIe plug. These should be a little bit easier because I only need to hold on to two wires instead of three. Oh, and never put newspaper under a soldering iron. That's a bad idea. So that's how to connect the wires to create a functional PCIe plug from two separate hard drive plugs. All I need to do now is tape up these connections and plug it in and see if it works. I've got all my wire connections taped together. The proper way to do this would probably be to use heat shrink tubing, but I don't have any. And just to recap the schematics of this operation, I started out with two separate power connectors from a standard computer power supply and I separated out a black and a yellow from each one and I made sure not to use two connectors that were just tied together like this. I needed two connectors that had their own separate power leads going back to the supply box. And one of these power connectors I connected to one yellow and one black of the PCIe plug and on the other one I connected two of the yellow wires from the PCIe plug to the one yellow of the Molex connector and the same with the black wires. It would probably be best to not use these plugs at the same time as this one. In my case, I do need to use this plug, which is why I only ran the one set of wires to it in a hope to not overload the power supply. I'm not really worried about it though because there should still be plenty of power and even if it was overloaded I believe these have an internal circuit breaker to stop any real damage from occurring. So now I'll just plug everything in and see what happens. Everything is now plugged in. It's time to attempt to power up the machine and see what happens. I'm going to pay close attention to this fan right here on the graphics card which should give me some indication whether or not my new PCIe plug is working correctly. So I'll press the power button and that looks promising. Let's check out the screen because I have yet to see anything on that screen since I... Oh! Hey, hey! By all accounts, the system will boot or post or show that screen anyway. I'm not sure if there's even an operating system on this machine, but that's all beyond the scope of this video. I hope I've given you some insight as to how to manufacture your own Molex connector to PCIe converter cable. Thanks for watching.
And just in case somebody out there was a smarty pants, this motherboard does not have built-in video. 